KC's Audio Vault. Tony Kishman, September 30th, 2011. Hey, Casey. Hey, Tony. How are you today? I'm doing good. And you? Uh, Very well. We're happy we could have you in town performing the music of Paul McCartney. We got three shows this weekend, right? Yes, we do. Tonight and tomorrow, and then you got an afternoon one on Sunday. Yes. Now, do you follow the path of his career, like the start of the show, we get the early Beatles and then kind of go from there? Well, we what we're doing is basically what McCartney would do with a symphony. So we're doing anything that is symphonic, like whatever he had an orchestra on on one of his or, or most of his songs. So everything that he's got with a full symphony, we, we are recreating live. So are these songs just the Beatles ones by, by Paul, or are we kind of covering the, the bases? We're covering a, a wide variety of what he's done in his life. A lot of the Beatles stuff, a lot of the Wings material, and some of his solo material. Do we got the costume changes as well? Can we see you evolve as Paul McCartney? Uh, well, basically, I'm wearing clothes that like Paul would wear now, or similar to this kind of look. I'm not doing... Uh, a Beatles tribute. I'm doing a McCartney solo show. As if Paul were in front of a symphony. It seems like the copyright and licensing laws are changing all the time. Is it a bit of a process to put on a show like this? Uh, no more so than a Beatles show with the symphony. It's um, you know something we've done for tw- about 12, 13 years now. And it's been a lot of fun doing the Beatles with a symphony. You know, and then what we've done is we've done a sister show of the Classical Mystery Tour show called Live and Let Die, which is all McCartney, which is really a lot of fun, and it's a very high-energy show. With the Beatlemania and the things that you've been doing over, over the years, did the behind-the-scenes things, have they changed at all with, with the licensing? Because I guess Beatles music got picked up by EMI. Well, not, not in a sense of live performance, only if you're recording. Have you have you met Mr. Paul, or should I say Sir Paul McCartney? Uh, no, I came real close a few times, but never did meet him. But he has seen me perform. Has he given you a review? He said, to, he said in a newspaper write-up that the guy that plays me is uh, very talented and I wish him well. Well, that's good to hear. Yeah, it was very nice to hear. Did you get into the, the Beatles at, at a young age? Did it grab you right off the hop? Just like anyone else, um, I was a Beatle fan, and then I joined the Beatlemania production when I was uh, younger, and I ended up in London where George Martin came to see me perform, and that was a lot of fun. Was Paul your favorite right from the start? Uh, Of course. I mean, I've always liked McCartney. I was a a big George fan as well, uh, but I've always liked Paul. So the the bass, was that the first musical instrument you picked up as as a kid? Uh, No, I was more of a guitarist when I started out in music, and I was in a top 40 band, doing a lot of rock stuff, you know. And then I ended up doing some Beatles stuff, and I found that there was a show doing a, it was a production show on Broadway, and then I auditioned for that, and that's when I started learning other instruments. Do you get any flack for playing right-handed instead of left like Paul? Not often. <laughs> no, it's a it's a portrayal of him that I'm doing, and people pretty much overlook it. I think that's pretty that's pretty nitpicky if someone's going to point that one out. Yeah, but usually they're they're telling me it when they're signing an autograph. I'm getting an autograph to them at the end of the show, so that's always fun. <laughs> well, we're looking forward to all the shows this weekend. Thank you so much for being able to talk just for a few minutes today. I enjoy it. I'm really looking forward to it, and uh, I hope you'll be down too. All the interviews you want on iTunes and at Power97.com. Casey's Audio Vault. Casey Norman is Power97's music director and can be heard every weekday from 2 till 6 in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. Power97 is Winnipeg's best rock.